live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Barcelona, everybody. We're wrapping up day one of Cisco Live Barcelona CUBE coverage. I'm Dave Vellante, he's Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Donnie Williams is IT director at Scott Equipment out of Louisiana, and Eric Herzog is back. He's the CMO of IBM Storage. Gentlemen, good to see you, welcome. Thank Great, you. thank you for having us. You're, you're very welcome. So tell us about Scott Equipment. What do you guys do? And What's the company all about? Uh, we're a heavy equipment dealer, so we've been we've been in the business for 80 years, privately owned company, and um, so we're we're uh, we started out in, in farm implement uh, uh, 80 years ago uh, by the founder uh, Tom S Scott, uh, which is where the name Scott Equipment comes from, and um, so we transitioned over the years to uh, construction equipment. Um, and we're now, so we, back in 2014, we sold all of our, uh, the farm stores that handled all of that equipment and uh, now we're, we're strictly uh, servicing the construction industry and petrochemical industry. So you, you're a dealer of, of, exactly. of large equipment and, and you exactly. service it as well? Or, yes, we or? service it. We, we're uh, primarily a rental company uh, first, then, then we, we also sell what we rent, uh, we service, service it. Uh, and, w and also uh, parts as well. So, so we're talking massive. Uh, yes, big. Uh, if you if you think uh, our one of our main lines is Volvo, uh, which you if you if you've seen the show um, uh, uh, Gold Rush, uh -huh. uh, that that Volvo equipment that you see there, that's that's what we sell. So uh, uh, it's incredible machine. Yeah, 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 they are. I, <laughs> I, I had a chance to uh, to play with one. I went to uh, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, where where their uh, North America office is, and uh, had a chance to, to play with their largest excavator. That was, that was fun. So is a lot of your IT centered on sort of the, the, the maintenance business and the service business? Or yes, like so we're, we're, I guess, mostly Mirror uh, is like a, a, a car dealership. If you, if you um, so we, we, like I said, we do sales service, um, parts, uh, all of that. So the business flow starts after the sale is made, obviously. Exactly, yes, we sell. A lifetime well, we, customer. Yeah, exactly, yeah. We, get, we get the equipment out there uh, in, the, in, the, in the territory and, and then the, the revenue uh, continues to, uh, to come in. So what are some of the challenges, the, the external challenges that are driving your, your business? So really, our, um, the, the whole heavy equipment industry is, is kind of a, Behind the times, in my uh, from from a dealership perspective, from a from a manufacturer perspective, uh, they're they're somewhat up with technology, especially especially Volvo. Mm -hmm. uh, but from a dealership, I mean, they're they're mi mainly privately owned, so they're not there's not a whole lot of resources in in uh, in technology. Uh, they don't that's not a focus for them. They they're they're focused on on the business side of it. So um, what we um, when I when I first started the company 10, uh, 11 years ago now, uh, there was one guy uh, servicing six hundred employees, and uh, and it was one IT you, person. One IT person. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, it was I mean, it w it was a nightmare. Go. I mean, it's not the the guy's fault. I don't blame him at all. It's just it's just the the way that they do, had done business and not changed. He's so, one bummed out IT person. Yeah. Right. He? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did uh, you guys find them? So they're a customer of ours for the Versus stack. Uh, we have a partner that they've been buying their IBM and their Cisco gear from, and then when they were doing a modernization effort, the reseller talked to Scott and said, Donnie, what do you think? How about doing this converged infrastructure, easier to deploy, et cetera? So it all came through their existing channel partner that they were using for both IBM gear and Cisco gear. Yeah, so, so, so you, you wanted a solution that one guy could run, right? <laughs> 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 we've, we've now at least grown that our company to now, we have six total in our, in our department. So uh, we've, we've changed a lot since, since I started in the uh, yeah. 11 years ago. And what are they spending their time doing? What, what's the, uh, the team? Primarily, uh, we do a lot of uh, Help desk uh, and systems administration. Mm -hmm. um, we do mostly. Uh, our, my, my focus is to make sure that our employees are satisfied, <coughs> uh, that, that so they can take care of the customer, mm -hmm. and that's that's the primary goal. Uh, and along with that comes comes systems administration. 
uh, as well. So, yeah. but uh, you know, a full stack like this. I mean, the, the joke you need more than one person, but right. it's going to be simplified. You know what you're buying. Right. It's predictable, exactly. and therefore you shouldn't need to be yep. si seeing it on a day-to-day -day yes. basis. Yes, I like keeping things simple, simple as possible. So. Uh, that makes that makes my job easier. That makes my team's job easier as well. Yeah. So, what, what kind of things are you, you you driving? Is it you know data protection? Is it uh, you know what 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 sort of you know use cases do you have uh, on your stack? Um, we are uh, from our we're we're servicing on our uh, with a, with Cisco versus uh, sorry versus stack. Uh, we are uh, it's mostly it's, it's all private cloud. Uh, we're servicing uh, applications. Uh, uh, that's that supplement our our uh, our core ERP system. So uh, uh, we have reporting solutions. We we were when we first bought uh, the uh, the Versa stack, uh, we were considering moving another to another ERP system, uh, and we would have that that infrastructure in place to 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 uh, to migrate to that. So we still we still have that. That actually on the table as, a, as an option for us. Uh, the the migration to a, a new ERP system. Yes. Oh, uh, we should talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're avoiding yeah. that at all costs. <laughs> right. 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 Of course, you don't yes. want to convert if you don't right. have to. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, but sometimes there's a business case. Sometimes it's hard yeah. to make. We'll, we'll talk. Exactly. Um, cloud in your in your future or or present? Oh, we're mean, we're doing some uh, SaaS some stuff or, uh, or, or yeah or a, a little of that. I mean yeah. anything. I mean things that are that make sense for us to do cloud. I mean, security services. Uh, we're doing uh, of course probably the most common is is hosting email. We're doing a lot of that SharePoint mm -hmm. that that type of solution in the cloud. And how long have you been with the company? <coughs> uh, Eleven years. Eleven years. Okay. So thinking about the last decade, I mean, it's a lot of a lot has changed. <coughs> yes. Um, what's your, what are you most proud of? What's your, like your biggest success that you can share with us? Uh, really building my the uh, the IT department and, and bringing our company into the 21st century uh, from a from a technology perspective. I mean. Like I said, we had one person that was that was handling it. it. It was really impossible. I mean, you couldn't depend depend on one person and 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 expect the company to survive long term. Yeah, that um, one person had to say no a lot. Exactly like, right. More. I mean, it, he just couldn't get everything done. Right. And so that that really that modernization and yes. kind of where you guys came right. in. Right. IT moder um, IT modernization play. The Versus stack is <coughs> heavily used for that. Um, and you know. As we said on the earlier interview, we had a CSP in. We've also used it to go, you know, to the next level from an IT transformation to the future. Because in that case, as you know, that was a CSP who uses it to service, you know, hundreds of customers all across uh, the UK in a service model. And in this case, this is more of a IT modernization. Take the old stuff, upgrade it to what it was. They even had an old IBM Blade servers. That's how old the stuff was. Mm -hmm old x86 blade servers that must have been 10 years old before they went to the Versus stack. How many people in the company, roughly? Uh, right now, we, we've actually sold off, uh, since I've been with the company, we've sold off some of our non-performing uh, business units. Uh, we're probably roughly around 550 now. Okay. That's so, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're actually more profitable now than we were 11 years ago from, uh, I mean, and we have less employees, but our profitability is actually Exceeded. So theme of simplification. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> what's, the, what's the biggest challenge you get, you face as the the head of IT today? <sighs> the biggest, probably the biggest challenge would be um, uh, me wanting to implement technologies that are not real, not ready. I want to I want to have the competitive edge uh, that uh, of, of the industry. I want to be able to be ahead of of the um, head of the curve, um, and that's probably the probably the biggest challenge. And, and and you're saying you can't because the tech isn't ready, or it's a skills oh, issue. Oh, it's or? just uh, it's just the industry just trying to uh, to work with vendors and 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 getting getting them to be ready for. Uh, or uh, I, I say vendors, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. There are vendors um, to to get them to uh, and, and other dealers as well. Uh, to, to all be um, acceptable to the to technology that's been there 20 years. What, what would you say is the 
the, or the top, number one, or the top things that IBM has done to make your life easier? And what's the one <coughs> thing they, they could do that, that, that they're not doing that could make your life easier? What's the, first start with what they've done, you know, what are the successes, you know, that have Well, really, that have, that have really, I've, I mean, we've been a long time IBM customer. Mm -hmm. We have not, not just the um, Versus stack, but we also have the, uh, the power system, which actually runs our, our core ERP. Um, uh, okay, so. And um, so, I mean, we've had long-standing relationship with IBM. I mean, the uh, reliability is there, the trust is there as well. Yeah, long-term partnership. Yes. Right, what's the one thing they could do? <clears throat> One to, thing to, they could if you could if you could wave a wand and <coughs> say IBM will do X, what would X be to make your life better? Uh, cut the price. Oh, here we go. <laughs> 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 I should have pre prefaced that too. <laughs> besides, cut the price. All right, we'll, we'll leave it there on, 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 that, on that topic. Uh, but, but you know, the power system thing br brings up. Um, you know, our friend uh, Bob Picciano is running the, the, the Cognitive Systems Group now. You guys are doing some stuff in AI. Maybe right. you can talk about that a little bit. So what we've done is two things. First of all, we've imbued inside of our systems AI all over the place. So for example, when we tier data, which can, we can do not only to our own array, but literally to 440 arrays that have someone else's logo on them, it's all AI done. So when the data's hot, it's on the fastest tier. So if you have 15,000 RPM drives and 7,200 RPM drives, it goes to 15,000. When it cools off, AI automatically moves it. The storage admin does nothing. You don't set policies, AI takes care of it. If you have flash and you have hard drives, same thing, it'll move around. And you could have an IBM array talking to an EMC array. So all sorts of technology that we've implemented that's AI in the box. Then on top of that, what we've done is come up with a series of AI reference architectures for storage as one of the critical elements of the platform. So what we've done is create what we call a data pipeline. It involves not only our storage arrays, but four pieces of our software, Spectrum Scale, which is giant scale out file system. In fact, the two fastest supercomputers in the world have almost half an exabyte of that software, storage with that software. Our Spectrum Discover, which we announced in Q4, which is all about better management of metadata. So for AI workloads, big data analytic workloads, the data scientist doesn't prep the data. They can actually talk to what we do and you can create all these metadata templates and then boom, they run an AI workload on Thursday and then run an analytic workload on Friday, but all automated. Um, our archive and then our uh, cloud object storage. So all that is really, think about it more as an oval because when you're doing an AI system, you're constantly learning. Uh -huh. So the thing you got to do is one, you've got to have high performance and be able to handle the analytics, which we do on Flash. Okay, so the flash is connected. You've got to be able to move the data around and part of the thing with the Spectrum Discover is that we can talk through an API to a piece of AI software, to a piece of analytics software, to a piece of big data software, and they can literally go through that API, create templates for the metadata, and then automatically suck what they need into their app and then munge it and then spew it back out. And then obviously on the archive side, you want to be able to quickly recall the data because if you think about an AI system, it's like a human. So let's give you my Russian example. So I'm old enough when I was a kid, there were bomb shelters in my neighborhood that people dug in the backyard. Then we have, you know, Nixon lightning up with the Chinese. Then we have Reagan and Gorbachev. Next thing you know, the wall comes down, right? Then the next thing you know, there's no longer a Soviet Union. All of a sudden, oh, the Russians might be getting a little aggressive even though they're no longer communist. And now you see, depending on which political party, either they're totally against us or they're totally helping us. But you know, if they really were hacking systems, who's, whatever political party you're in, if they really were hacking our systems, trying to manipulate the election, pro or con, the point is, that's kind of like a cyber attack. And that's not a good thing. So we learn and it changes. So an AI system needs to understand and change, constantly learn. If all of a sudden you have flying cars, that's going to be different than a car with tires. Now a lot of it may be the same, the interior, all the amenities, but the engine's going to be different and there are companies, including the big big three, four or five auto, who are actually working on flying cars. Who knows if it will happen, but so the AI system needs to understand and learn that and constantly learn. And so the foundation has to be heavily resilient, heavily performant, heavily available, last thing you want is an AI system going down on you, especially if you're in healthcare or big giant manufacturing like Volvo, his customer, when they're building those cranes and things, they must cost 50, 60 million dollars. If that assembly line goes down, it's probably a big deal for them. So you need AI systems that always keep your other systems up and running. So you have to have that solid foundation of storage underneath. Awesome, all right, uh, we got to leave it there. Uh, give the customer the last word, Donnie. 
First time in Barcelona, right? I yes, it is. What are you, how are you finding the show and the city? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Uh, this is my actually my fifth uh, Cisco Live, first, uh. Uh, first time in Europe, so yeah. yeah, enjoying it. Good, good. Well, thank you guys for sure. coming on theCUBE. Great, thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Have you back really appreciate you. it. Yes. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap day one, Cisco Live Barcelona. You're watching theCUBE.